Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. In today's video, we're going to dive into 6 interesting facts about my boy, the intelligent, blue-skinned chess, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Thrawn's been a fan favorite among Star Wars fans since his introduction in May 1991 in Timothy Zahn's Legends novel, Heir to the Empire, and admiration for Thrawn has continued to grow with his reintroduction into the current canon in Star Wars Rebels in 2016. Thrawn's a dope-ass character. So, let's discuss 6 interesting facts about one of the most interesting villains in Star Wars, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Number 1. Author Timothy Zahn's inspiration for Thrawn is quite interesting. When author Timothy Zahn began to craft the character of Thrawn, he pulled from some very interesting historical and fictional figures. According to Zahn, Thrawn is a composite of various historical and fictional personalities, including the Nazi Erwin Rommel, the Confederate General Robert E. Lee, the Carthaginian General Hannibal Barca, Conqueror Alexander the Great, and the brilliant detective Sherlock Holmes, to name a few. Additionally, Zahn also pulled from another Star Wars character for inspiration, that being General Maximilian Veers, who most notably appeared in The Empire Strikes Back during the Battle of Hoth. Zahn chose Veers as inspiration as he believed that Veers had the distinction of being one of the few highly competent Imperial officers from the original trilogy. Interestingly, Zahn knew he didn't want Thrawn to be a darksider or political title holder and instead wanted the Chiss to be a military leader. When deciding what rank Thrawn should hold within the Imperial military, Zahn settled for giving Thrawn the Grand Admiral rank, which he had encountered while reading William L. Shirer's The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich in the context of its use in the German Navy, believing that making Thrawn a normal admiral would have been too mundane. Number 2. Thrawn's full name is Wild. Although referred to most frequently as Thrawn, my man's name is Wild as Hell and our homie has actually had several names over the years. First, let's discuss the importance of names within Chiss culture and the structure of names. Most Chiss names were multisyllabic and consisted of three distinct parts. The first portion identified an individual's family, the second was the given name, and the third indicated other social factors. Aside from the long form of their names, the Chiss also use shortened variants called core names, which were a shortened name most commonly used by the Chiss except during the most formal of situations. In Thrawn's case, our homeboy was born into the Kivu family, which was a small and poor family among the Chiss ascendancy, where he was initially given the name Kivu Ra Nuru. His core name at that time was Vuron. When of age, Vuron eventually attended an academy on the Chiss planet of Rentor, where he attracted the attention of the powerful Myth family. After a visit from one of the Myth family representatives, Thrawn was accepted into the myths as a merit adoptive, which meant he was being adopted into the myth family because of his skills and the potential prestige he could bring to the myth family. As was custom, Thrawn's name would change to reflect his family, gaining the new name Mithra Nuru. At some point, Thrawn's name again changed and he became Mithra Nuru Odo. Although we haven't found out the exact story behind Thrawn's name becoming Mithra Nuru Odo, most likely his name changed to reflect his rise within the myth family and or the Chiss Ascendancy. Number 3. Thrawn was an officer in the Chiss Ascendancy. The empire that Thrawn lived in was called the Chiss Ascendancy, and after impressing his superiors while training at the Academy on Rentor, and then later the Taharim Academy on Naparor, Thrawn's astuteness and military brilliance allowed him to rise through the ranks of the Chiss Ascendancy's military, which was called the Chiss Expansionary Defense Fleet. As a senior captain of the Chiss Expansionary Defense Fleet, Thrawn was given command of a heavy cruiser called the Springhawk. However, some of Thrawn's tactics used during the Vagari pirate operations resulted in him being relieved of his command of the heavy cruiser. Not too long after, Thrawn was reinstated as commander of the Springhawk and helped lead successful military operations during the attack on the Petatus, as well as helping to stop the expansion of the Nicardan dynasty. At one point during his career within the Chiss Ascendancy, Thrawn was assigned to explore the Outer Rim territories of the galaxy. This was due to a mysterious threat in the unknown regions the Ascendancy had discovered and the Chiss wished to know if the Galactic Republic would be a suitable ally against the potential threat threat, which brings us to our number 4 interesting fact, Anakin and Thrawn teamed up during the Clone Wars. After being dispatched to the Outer Rim territories to learn if the Galactic Republic would be a suitable ally, Thrawn encountered Anakin Skywalker above the Outer Rim planet of Batu during a mission to locate Padme after she'd gone missing. Thrawn informed Anakin that he hoped to learn about the Clone Wars, and the Jedi agreed to provide Thrawn with information on the war in exchange for the Chiss' 
Batu's assistance in locating Padme, which Thrawn agreed to. The duo then set off for Batu's Black Spire outpost and began investigating Padme's disappearance. Over the course of several weeks, Thrawn and Anakin were able to work together to find Padme, as well as foil a Separatist plot to strengthen their battle droid's armor with Cortosis, which was a metal that had a very high energy absorption rate that could make the droid armor indestructible against blasters and even lightsabers. Additionally, Thrawn was able to return to the Chiss Ascendancy with one Republic energy shield, which was vastly superior to the electrostatic barriers used on ships in the expansionary defense fleet. Thrawn informed members of the Chiss Ascendancy that he was unimpressed, however, with the state of the Republic and believed it to be unfit for an alliance with the Chiss, citing the Republic's democratic style of government, created a bogged down system where everyone had a voice but nothing was accomplished. Number 5. Thrawn faked his exile from the Chiss Ascendancy to join the Empire. While still an officer of the Chiss Expansionary Defense Fleet, the Chiss Ascendancy became increasingly worried about the threats their Empire faced in the Unknown Regions. Because of this, the Ascendancy ruled that the time had come to secure potential allies. One such ally the Ascendancy had their sights on was the Galactic Empire. While the Chiss Ascendancy knew about the Empire, they were uncertain if the Empire would align themselves with the Ascendancy or even be a suitable ally. To find out, out, Thrawn was given a mission. He would infiltrate the Empire in order to either make it an ally or weaken it enough so that it became easy prey for the threat within the Unknown Regions, thereby shifting focus away from the Ascendancy. In order to carry out this mission, Thrawn would have to fake his exile. With the help of the Ascendancy, Thrawn chose a planet in Wild Space where his mission would begin. Once Thrawn had been deployed to the unidentified planet in Wild Space, he set up a hut designed to look as though he'd been living in it for years. After several attempts and a few standard months, spent on the planet, Thrawn finally managed to gain the attention of the Empire. Once the Empire arrived on the planet, originally searching for smugglers, they found Thrawn's encampment and discovered markings left on crates in the Cybisi language, forcing the Imperial contingent to try to find the unknown alien being in accordance with the unknown alien protocols. Thrawn then created havoc and chaos from the shadows, forcing the Empire to leave the planet. Before that happened, however, Thrawn killed a stormtrooper, took his armor, and then stowed away on the Imperial Star Destroyer. Thrawn soon made his presence known to the commanding officer of the Star Destroyer, Captain Voss Park, and explained that he was responsible for the chaos they encountered on the unidentified planet. Impressed, Captain Park took Thrawn before Emperor Palpatine on Coruscant, where the Emperor and Thrawn discussed Thrawn's previous encounter with Anakin, that the Chiss Ascendancy had discovered a mysterious threat in the Unknown Regions, and offered his information on the threat in exchange for the Empire's help. Accepting Thrawn's offer for information on the Unknown Regions, the Emperor also offered the Chiss a role in the Imperial Navy. Thrawn accepted the offer on the condition that he was allowed to keep Cadet Eli Vanto as his translator, which the Emperor obliged. Thrawn and Eli Vanto were then sent to the Royal Imperial Academy on Coruscant so that Eli Vanto could complete the final months of his training and Thrawn could acclimate to life as an Imperial, thus beginning a bond and partnership between the two that would blossom over time. Number 6. Thrawn was one of only a few non-humans to serve in a high role within the Empire. Throughout Thrawn's career in the Imperial military, it was widely known that the Empire pursued a xenophobic policy that favored humans and treated non-humans as subjects or threats. This xenophobic stance created an environment that was hostile and toxic towards non-humans and, as a result, the Empire's government and military was largely dominated by humans, making it extremely rare to find non-humans serving as Imperial officers. Likewise, the Imperial academies were dominated by humans and non-humans such as Thrawn often found themselves having to navigate racial prejudice and outright hostility. While Imperial General Orders instructed Imperial military personnel not to disrespect aliens, this was often ignored. Nevertheless, Thrawn's strengths and brilliance as a military tactician allowed him to overcome the xenophobia that was pervasive in the Empire, resulting in his eventual rise to the rank of Grand Admiral, becoming one of only 12 Grand Admirals in the Empire. And there you have it. Those are six interesting facts about my homeboy, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Thrawn's a character whose backstory has become a favorite of mine, especially in the canon novels. The first Thrawn canon novel is dope as hell. Additionally, since it was revealed in Season 2 of The Mandalorian that my homegirl Ahsoka is seeking the whereabouts of Thrawn, Star Wars fans are clamoring at the thought that our homie is poised to return to the screen in the Ahsoka series or other Star Wars projects. However Lucasfilm decides to have Thrawn reappear on screen is cool with me and I'm all about it. 
but what do you guys think about some of the facts we've discussed? What are some of your favorite Thrawn facts or moments? Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching, and stay nerdy.